Hello guys, we're going to be reviewing another watch, and today we're going to be reviewing the uh, San Martin um, SN004, um, a dive watch in homage to that um, well-known Rose brand. So I'm going to use the term review lightly since um, I've only had it for about uh, 48 hours. Um, so let's do a quick 360 of the watch. So there's the crystal dial and bezel. There's your crown. There's on the top of the lugs, the bracelet, the clasp, and then the case back. And let's put it on wrist. There you go. Very, very nice. Um, so the watch came in this Pelican style box. Some people prefer the green tube. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter. Um, I can take either or. I actually like this uh, Pelican style um, box with these plastic tabs. There's a little San Martin uh, sticker there. A bag um, that the watch came in with all the bubble wrap. Uh, user manual and warranty. And then it came with um, this precision screwdriver as well as this spring bar tool and, and push pin tool. So I really do like that they included this stuff and I hope that they continue to do so. And then here's one of the two spare links that I removed from the bracelet. So a really nice box and we're going to use that as a pointer. So let's weigh this bad boy. We're gonna put all the links on the scale and we get 143 grams. Let's take the two links off and we get 135 grams, which is awesome. It's not too heavy and not too light, just perfect for me anyway. All right, so back to the watch. So yeah, isn't she beautiful? So let's go over the dimensions, uh, specifications, pros, cons, and what I think San Martin can do to improve this model. So we'll start off with the dimensions. So the uh, case width is 38 millimeters wide. The lug to lug is 46. The thickness, including the sapphire, is 13 with a 20 mil, um, with a 20 millimeter lug opening. So horizontal fine brushing on the left and right side of the case you have a polished chamfer that goes up to um, more brushing on the top of the case lugs and on the back of the case you have cylindrical fine brushing you have a uh, coin edge bezel and it is a combination of high polish in matte finish, um, on the top of the rim, it appears to be brush or, brush or matte. You have a um, ceramic insert that is um, high gloss dark blue, um, deeply engraved markings with a silver platinum-ish pearlescent um, material. The pip is um, Swiss BGW9 Blue Loom. There is a... Um, Excuse me, let's go back to the bezel. So some people get 90 clicks with these. This is 120 click, which I prefer. Um, I've watched other reviews where they have had 120 clicks as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10 times 12, 120 click. This is unidirectional rotating. So there is a high polish stainless steel ring that separates the crystal from that ceramic insert. Uh, the crystal is a single dome, uh, what I believe is a top hat crystal, and it has blue AR coating underneath. Um, a um, somewhat thin uh, rehalt that is uh, coated in some type of dark blue material Moving on to the dial, we have a dark blue dial with some silver pearlescent material. 
meaning if you get this in the right light, especially out in the sunlight, you'll be able to see uh, these silver sparkles. Um, it's very much a, a glossy uh, dial from what I can tell. Um, there is a white second minute track on the outer perimeter of that dial, individually applied markers that are silver tone high polish, and like the PIP, they are filled with the Swiss BGW9 Blue Loom. Um, we have a, a silver tone high polished snowflake style handset, again, um, inlaid with that Swiss BGW Non Blue Loom. Um, below that 12th hour marker, you have the San Martin hexagonal logo. Above the six, you have automatic 200 meters equals 660 feet of water resistance. There is your screw down crown. It's got the San Martin logo that is polished in matte. And then the rest of the crown is high polished and there's some coin edging there to allow you to grip that screw down crown. This is powered by the TMI NH35A 24 Joule Automatic Movement by Seiko. Uh, this provides a second minute hour and a date complication, though you can't see the date because there's no date cut out on the dial. Hence, this is a ghost date. Um, the movement also provides hacking, hand winding, and if we're able to see the date, a quick set dates. It has Seiko's Dioshock protection system, so if you drop the watch at a certain height, in all probability, it will be okay and it will maintain its accuracy. So let's unscrew the crown. And you can see in the default position, we have manual winding. In position one, we have the quick set date. And if we pull the crown all the way out to the second position, uh, the movement hacks, allowing you to set the time right down to the second, which if you're like me, that's a great thing because I like for my watches to be set down to the second almost every day. So let's just rotate those hands. And let's check the hand alignment while we're um, manipulating the hands. And yeah, you can see the hand alignment is spot on perfect. So I'm happy with that. Okay, and then we're gonna put the, I'm gonna screw that crown down. All right, so moving on, we have solid um, female end links that attaches that oyster style bracelet to the case. Um, all the links are brushed on the top, polished on the side, and on the back side they're brushed. Um, one piece screws for the removable links. Then we are met with a, a fully milled um, doyle deployment clasp. So you got that tr twin trigger release here, uh, brushed on the side, brushed on the top. You have polished chamfers. And then you have that uh, San Martin logo. It appears to be applied. I'm not sure how they do that. It is a combination of high polish and matte finish um, for micro adjust. There's your milled swing arm. There's a little bit of water because I just cleaned this. So that's what the underside of the clasp looks like. And then there is your um, sterile screw down case back and those solid female in links from behind. I did open this watch as I do all my watches and um, the NH35A is a TMI, not SSI as we're used to, and it's held in place by a plastic movement holder. So let's talk about uh, the cons first because there's, they're not, there's not many cons, at least to me. So um, concerning the bezel, it does line up, but there is a little play, so I'm gonna rotate it, and I'm gonna pull it back, and you can see it moved and it settled. So let's do that again. 
can see it moves back just a tad, but not bad at all. So very good. And there's no like bouncing or anything, which irks me. When I first got this, the crown was a little gritty. So what I did is I took some, uh, you know, duster, unscrewed the crown and blowed the crown out and then applied a little bit of silicone grease. Unscrewed and screwed on the crown a few times and then the crown got better. Um, it is a, a little squeaky, but after a few baths with lukewarm water, um, a lot of the squeakiness has gone out. The clasp, you know, sometimes it wants to close and sometimes it doesn't. So I really have to make sure to press it down firmly. And I must admit, this is the first time I've had such a clasp on a diver style watch and it makes me nervous. I do kind of wish there was a safety, um, much like uh, this glycine, for example. We see it's this little safety there. It just makes it feel a little bit more secure. Um, so it, it's not bad, it hasn't come off my wrist, but again, I really have to make sure that, um, you know, is fully fastened. Um, it does have a plastic movement holder. I would prefer metal, although I'm sure that the plastic cuts down on cost and it probably aids in shock protection versus a metal movement holder. The loom um, is amazing and it, it is a little blotchy on the hour hand, um, but nothing like so bad that I'm gonna send it back. And I've seen that they've had that issue uh, with other reviews. Um, even this glycine uh, suffers from that as well on the hour hand. So it's kind of a common thing with entry level watches. So it's no big deal. And as far as the cons, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you hate homages, I guess you can throw that in there. But other than that, um, that's it for the cons. Now the pros, there are so many pros. Um, you know, first off, it's just a beautiful watch. Um, I love the gloss blue ceramic insert and dial. The finishing, as everybody has attested to, is amazing. I've never owned a San Martin. Um, I've heard about them for about a year now. Finally decided to pick one up. And the reviewers are um, factual. The brushwork is amazing. Um, it's one of the best well-finished watches I've ever had. So kudos to San Martin for the finishing. Those polished chamfers even on that clasp and the, the brushing is just very fine. Um, you know, the dimensions are perfect for me. You know, it comes in at 38 millimeters wide with about a 38.5 to 39 millimeter wide bezel that slightly overhangs the case. So it allows me to really get a good grip on, uh, on the bezel. Um, the crown is nicely finished, and after breaking in a little bit, it's it's fine. The, the insert aligns up. The loom is really good. The engraving on the, the ceramic inserts very deep, and whatever material they put in the, the bezel is very good. I really like the color. That single domed sapphire crystal is beautiful. There's a lot of distortion. It kind of looks like, you know the old Hezolite crystals back in the day that you saw old dive watches um, have. I have never experienced a rehaul that is painted to match the dial and bezel insert. Um, and I must say that I actually like it. It is really, really nice and unique versus, you know, a rehaul that looks something like that, that is just brushed. Um, the markers and hands, you know, they're they're they are polished so well. They're they're so shiny and reflective. The loom again is really great and bright. Um, the printing is very crisp. I love the pearlescent material in the dial. You just got the little silver sparkles. It's beautiful. Um, and concerning the logo. I love the logo, okay? Um, a lot of people, or not say a lot of people, but some people still complain about the logo and I think they should stop complaining because they've decided on this logo and I think that they should keep it. 
it's simple, it's beautiful, it's, you know, a hexagon that goes on the inside of a hexagram or Star David, so I think that's pretty cool. And then now it's on the uh, crown instead of that gaudy, you know, dollar sign uh, S. And then it's on the case back, so the logos are consistent throughout. I love it, and I hope that they don't change it. Um, the solid female inlinks, the solid links, and, you know, how they're brushed and f polished. They're just done really well. Um, you know, the one-piece screws are great, and the little supplied screwdriver prevented, uh, as you can see, marring and damaging on those screw heads. So that's, that's, uh, I'm really, I really appreciate that they put that in. I really like the clasp. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. Yes, I gotta make sure I really push that thing down. Um, but it is fully milled. It is nicely finished. There's four micro adjusts. There's a nice logo there. I really like the swing arm. I've never seen a swing arm like this. Um, and then that case back. I love a sterile case back. That's what I really love about Rolex watches. They don't put like these gaudy, cartoonish animals or people on it. Um, I know the specifications of my watch. I don't need it engraved or laser etched all over the case back. I mean, if you look at this glycine, it's, it's crazy. And then you look at this Pagani design. There's just a lot of information. I don't need that. And I think I've even seen, yeah, Timex. We'll put Timex.com on, on the back of their case back. And this is ridiculous. Just give me a beautiful, sterile, nicely finished case back, and I'm going to be happy. Um, another one of the pros is, is that this doesn't really seem to lose nor gain time. I mean, whether I'm... Whether it's setting dial up or on wrist, it just doesn't lose nor gain a second. Now, it might be in a break-in period, and that could change. So we'll have to see. But as far as uh, accuracy, <laughs> um, it's um, beyond, um, you know, the expected accuracy for an NH 35A. So I'm happy with that. I don't know if San Martin regulates these or not. Um, I mean, yeah, and it just looks nice on the, on the wrist. And that taper from 20 to 16, you know, it's just very comfortable. So I really like that a lot. Um, San Martin, you know, they seem to be a really good company. Um, most of the reviews seem to be positive and good. Uh, they're well received in the watch community. Everybody reviews them. Most people like them. They make homages and they also have original designs. So they cater to just about everybody. They have small watches and large watches. They have they utilize Seiko movements and Swiss movements and Chinese movements. They utilize BGW9, C3 Superluminova. They do enamel dials. They do sunburst. I mean, they do everything. Um, I, I'm really impressed. And I want to say that, you know, just think about where Chinese watches have come. So, you know, over 10 years ago, we were dealing with those not so great Parnas watches. You know, we've seen tons of those reviewed and they weren't great. I never bought one. Um, and then we ended up with uh, companies like this, uh, Pagani Design, that kind of upped the ante. You know, this is a channel set synthetic gemstone bezel. These are not glued in. You know, screw down crown with pushers, a solid link bracelet with screw pins, a pseudo submariner clasp, and a Seiko movement. And then San Martin comes along and just, <laughs> you know, they capitalized on the Chinese market and they blew everything out of the water. As it stands, San Martin is probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, wristwatch makers in uh, China. And, I mean, they do just so many things well. Um, and that's, I mean, that's really about it with pros and cons. I'll add in two more cons. I would like to see Hull's case on the vintage um, cases. You know, this is very vintage inspired, so I'd really like to see Hull's case on this. But that's not really a con. But what another con is, and a lot of people have talked about this, um, it is a little sharp on the bracelet and case. 
Let's check the clasp. Oh, the clasp is well finished. Um, but the, it is a little sharp, not too bad. And you can see that the crown has kind of dug in the back of my hand and there's like a little spot. But granted, I have very sensitive soft skin, so I'm probably the problem, not the watch. So what would I like San Martin to do to improve this model? Well, first off, please San Martin, if you ever watched this video, make this a standard model, drop the limited edition. I mean, these have sold out numerous times you're saying that they're limited edition, but you keep putting them back in stock. Make them, just keep making them. Take the limited edition title away and make make this, <laughs> produce these forever, please, I beg of you. It's such a great size. It's a beautiful watch. It's been well received. Um, everybody that has gotten this really hasn't had any QC issues. Please, San Martin, I beg you. That's one thing I would ask you to do. Um, make it a holes case. Um, I love the logos, I can't complain about that. Maybe do a metal movement holder. Um, but uh, you know, plastic is fine. Make the uh, on the fly adjustable clasp um, standard on newer models, which I'm gonna, which I've already purchased today, by the way. So I can't wait to get that and install it. It does remain to be seen whether I'm gonna like it or not, because it is uh, a little bit bigger than this uh, standard clasp. Um, work on the bezel, um, you know, there's a little play, and I know on some models, um, you know, there isn't, whereas on others there is. Um, I think one of the ways you could address the play in the bezel is going from a spring to ball bearings, similar to how, what, like what Rolex uses um, on their uh, Submariners and GMTs. I think if you did that, there would probably be a better functioning bezel. Um, I mean, beyond that, <laughs> I can't really recommend San Martin do anything different. Everything else is great. Um, and yeah, you know, work on the, the sharpness. So make it a holes case, perhaps a metal movement holder, go to a ball bearing ceramic, or excuse me, a ball bearing a rotating bezel make that adjustable on the fly clasp standard. And uh, yeah, man, I just, I'm blown away, I love it. I'm really happy uh, with this watch. I'm definitely gonna be buying another San Martin in the future for sure. It's a cross between, I'm kind of deciding between um, a 40 that looks very similar to this that has a green dial and bezel insert. I really want this in a green dial and bezel insert, but they don't have it. This is a limited, so I might have to go for that 40 to get into a green dive watch. And I'm also considering the GMT with the bi-directionally rotating bezel and the NH34 GMT movement because I've never owned a GMT. I probably won't wear it much, but I do uh, really like the buy color bezels and I really want to try one out. I've never, I've never owned one. So that's going to do it for me. Um, I highly recommend San Martin. I'm beyond pleased with this. I, since I've got it home, I have not taken it off. Um, you know, I lubricated the crown, I opened it up, I lu lubricated the gasket and screwed that case back down really tight. <clears throat> I've bathed it a few times in lukewarm water, haven't had an issue with water resistance. And uh, yeah, she's just so accurate. So um, to everybody at San Martin, thank you. You did a phenomenal job. And to the wristwatch community, thank you for reviewing this brand heavily and highly recommending it and not deceiving people. Um, because <clears throat> now I'll admit I was a little weary ordering this watch because it, you know, it's a Chinese watch and I didn't really, you know, this Pagani design is not a super great watch. It has its issues and I'm going to review that watch in the future. But uh, this has changed my perception of Chinese watches. And uh, the last thing I want to say is I don't knock Chinese products. I mean, they, it's, you know, they assemble Apple products and I love Apple products. They do a phenomenal job there. So there's a lot of great stuff that comes out of China. And I'm, I'm really happy to see um, their wristwatch companies doing a lot better. 
and not just producing, you know, fakes. If you have any questions, comments, criticism, put them in the comments below. I will <clears throat> respond to you relatively quickly. Hope you enjoyed this review. That's going to do it for me.